Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share my full review, the Digitally Digested segment, for the Guvis Lite. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with this product, I unboxed it a while back, and it is a very impressive piece of hardware. Now, this is not a VR headset. It really serves the purpose of giving you a personal display that, of course, is wearable. And you can use your own optional headphones just by plugging into that 3.5 mil jack right there on the left side of the headset. But the real beauty of the Guvis Lite, which, by the way, I'll include a link in the description, is the ability to adjust this to your eyesight. So, uh, this is the most advanced uh, unit I've ever seen in terms of, uh, forget about the 3D, 2D capability or the brightness control, but getting true uh, overall fidelity for each of your eyes because both are adjustable. And for someone like me who wears corrective lenses, this is a really big deal because as much as I've enjoyed VR headsets, forget that their resolution is always subpar. You're also always dealing with the inability to actually fine-tune to, to each eye. So by having a diopter for both and being able to correct the actual experience on each eye, this thing is, in my opinion, one of the best devices of its kind. It's comfortable, it's lightweight, uh, and right now I have it connected. It's going to be very hard for you to see it here, but you can uh, without me hitting my lens. You can see, as we look around in there, we are running DEX. It is connected to my Tab S8 Ultra, and you can see inside the lens there, it's almost actually clear on my FX3. I'm trying not to damage my lens, but you can pretty much see uh, the entire desktop. And that, to me, is one of the most practical things about this device. Now, when Guvis sent this over, they also sent over their media player. And this thing is pretty expensive. The beauty of the media player is that it essentially is a little Android TV box in your pocket. It also powers the Guvis Lite on its own. So with a single cable connected to the Guvis uh, headset, it's powered from a battery pack inside of this. You can see that battery pack uh, being indicated in terms of where the power is at right now. We have about a 75% charge. And then you have all the Android buttons, you know, uh, as well as a directional pad and the ability select to select. This also actually acts as a mouse pad. Now, while in theory this is all quite brilliant because it's got a processor, it has RAM, it has local storage, and this can, it even has Netflix installed on it, the version of Android in here is relatively dated. So that means that if, like me, you would like to use something that's a little bit more cur uh, current, has current security patches, even though Guvis is not in question, they're not trying to do anything other than deliver a great uh, personal headset experience here, it, just the apps are dated. Uh, so while this is great in theory, I think Guvis needs more time to get this, uh, I would say, more up-to-date, give us something a little bit more current that really... Uh, essentially can use all of the apps in their latest and greatest form. I think once Guvis does that, this is only going to take this product to the next level. But that's the goal with this. Power the device and give you local media playback so you don't need any other device, which again, in theory, is great. But the ideal replacement for this is your smartphone. So uh, if you have a smartphone like I do, which you probably do, uh, especially an Android device. I'm not speaking to Apple users here. Uh, in my case, the Z Fold 3, even though my Z Fold 3 is having issues right now, simply connect it to the Guvis uh, headset uh, and you're in business. Now, with he here, I'm using the media player. And as you may have noticed, what I'm doing in order to accomplish this is that we are connected using Guvis's included splitter, the adapter. It's right here. And basically, what we've done, what I've done, I should say, is we're connected to this for power, uh, but the HDMI part is connected, of course, to the Type-C port of my Tab S8 Ultra. And this is the same thing you would do with a phone, like, you know, my Z Fold 3. And that was how I first demoed this. And basically, all I've done is I connected a Cable Matters adapter, HDMI uh, 2.1 to Type-C, and by doing that, I now have full access to everything that's on the tablet. The same would apply to my smartphone. So that effectively takes your smartphone and turns it into the same device as this. The only catch there, generally speaking, would be there'd be no power delivery. So this is still delivering power uh, to the Guvis 
uh, light headset, be aware of that. So if you were using it independently with your phone, you'd still kind of want to have this as a power source, but of course you could just use a battery bank and connect the Cable Matters uh, adapter to your phone or tablet of choice. And by doing that, you have access to everything that's on your phone, which I think is quite brilliant. I mean, that really is the way to go in the full scope of things. So. Uh, in terms of the actual resolution and things you should know, besides the ability to fine tune to each eye, like I've been saying, it's also the OLED displays that are being used in there. I mean, these are uh, AM OLEDs. You know, Guvis says a six, up to a 600 inch virtual display. Most users report, myself included, that it's more like having around a 27 to 30 inch monitor six feet away from you. Um, that's really the experience. So uh, very comfortable. I think the key difference here, again, versus a VR headset, is that not only do you have higher uh, fidelity because of the fine tuning to each eye, but then in addition to that, this offers some of the highest resolution of any headset on the market. Uh, the fact that they're OLEDs does not hurt. So, I mean, that to me is the real appeal to this. Again, $500 for the headset. Uh, alone, and of course, you can utilize it with your smartphone. As I mentioned, you will need an adapter, or at least I did. Every case, uh, use case is going to be different. Uh, but, you know, 53 PPD, 4,523 PPI, really impressive. Very little distortion on this, uh, and the contrast ratio is phenomenal. And the fact that it can adapt to anything with an HDMI port. I think is really the beauty. So if you wanted to use this for a drone, you could. If you wanted to use this with your PC, your laptop, your desktop, you could. But to me, the true, I would say, practical application is using it with your smartphone. And that's really what makes the most sense with the Guvis Lite. So if you're on a plane, if you're on your commute, and you know that you've got several hours to kill, throw on the headset with your headphones of choice, and enjoy content without disturbing others and without others actually watching your content. You know, is it ideal for a computer? Not really, because with a PC, you're still gonna have to have that screen up and it's not augmented reality where you can see the display. Uh, you know, I have something like that from Lenovo that's incredibly cool, but less practical in some ways than this. And then of course, more practical in the matter of being able to still see your PC, whereas here, you're not gonna have any visibility except for what's in front of your eyes. By the way, the headset does a great job blocking out light. That's another really important thing. And I, the actual weight of it, as I mentioned earlier in the video, is critical because you do not want to get fatigue on your neck. I mean, I don't have a great back or neck for that matter, and I'm not trying to make anything worse. Um, I was able to watch a full feature film on this without fatigue, and that's a big deal. Now, whether or not that's gonna be the case for you, there's only one way to find out. You gotta pick it up and try it. But the fidelity, uh, the overall experience is excellent. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just give you a quick look um, at a piece of video because I think that's another good way of demonstrating it. So let's go ahead and open up, uh, just go to YouTube here and let's jump into uh, something with something colorful, right? Let me go ahead and mute this Has the patient had these issues before? because we Is do not need it? audio. And again, I'm just going to give you a look into the Guvis and you will instantly see that fidelity just as you did earlier. Granted, I wasn't showing you that much and you do have to cover right here. There is a sensor to detect whether or not the Guvis is in use. So that's something to be aware of. But you can see, I mean, the quality on this thing is uh, epic for what it does. I mean, if you, like myself, have used VR headsets, you know that Things are always, even in the latest generation, fairly uh, degraded in terms of resolution. And then in addition to that, there's no way to really read text clearly without getting a terrible headache. Here, you can do it. And that's one of the reasons I think the Guvis is unique. Now, whether or not you need one of these in your life is another story. And as, as I look around the frame, you can start to see that at the edges uh, of the actual image that you're getting, uh, you are going to see black. And that is because, again, it really is representing a large virtual display. The ability to jump in and out of 2 and 3D is not something uh, that I think necessarily sets this apart. It's all about the fidelity of those OLED displays, which, again, are in you know individual uh, high-res displays that are great. Now, let's jump out of this. And this means you can watch anything, any app. Uh, so Netflix in its current gen, 
Of course, you can do that here with this, but I really think that Guvis needs to give us something a little bit more, more modern. And I think they can do it. I think they're, you know, a $400 device that really would be up to date like an Android tablet, but without a display, even if it did incorporate a display, that's how Guvis is going to really make this a turnkey product that for $1,000 out the door, people are going to want. Right now, I still feel like we're, we're not that far from, you know, it being just a really tech enthusiast, early adopter type product, but that doesn't mean a lot of you out there aren't going to be interested in it. After all, I remember, you know, the Sony headsets back in the day, um, not sure what's happening here, that were really nice, but ultimately very niche. This is kind of the opposite. So let me go ahead and close this out. I accidentally hit something here to bring up uh, files on board. And obviously if you have videos on board, really easy to do uh, to get in there and actually utilize whatever device you've connected. Uh, let me go ahead and bring up the, I'm gonna jump out of decks. I wanna bring up the camera so that I can actually show you what this looks like on my head. Uh, so let's go ahead and just hit that dex button, jump out, and it's totally plug and play. I mean, just from connecting the cable, instantly we were prompted. I'll show you that because I did not. But let's go ahead and bring up the camera. I'll say hello to all of you. You're gonna have to see through all the wires. You, you see me, right? At least on my preview monitor it looks like, and on there it looks like it. So what I will do now is just demonstrate, take off the glasses, go ahead and throw this baby on, and the headrest here, uh, I'm pointing to it, not realizing I'm no longer on camera, but that's where I am. The headrest is actually quite good. It's for your forehead, if that wasn't obvious enough. And you will see right now as I get this on, uh, there we have it. Now, of course, I can't really see. Uh, I, I am looking at myself here um, to some degree. And if I move these leads out of the way, you can see what this looks like on my head. I mean, pretty straightforward. I think the most important thing about it is that there is basically no light leakage at all uh, and the comfort level, because those are the two things that are make or break for a headset like this. Uh, so uh, that's pretty much it. Just wanted to show you what it looked like on my head as I hit the camera there, but let's go ahead and remove it. And again, I'm impressed with this. Um, I wasn't sure what it would actually be like quality wise, build quality, usability, but once I incorporated that Cable Matters adapter, it was a whole nother story. So let me go ahead and get us off of this. And I do want to demonstrate what I was talking about. So with the Cable Matters adapter employed and having this connected, so right now the Guvis is only connected to the media player. You're not getting anything there. But if I go ahead and just connect this, you will see immediately we will be prompted to launch DEX. Well, it's already recognizing that it's connected to an external display. So it's already there. So in this case, it's not prompting for DEX. That is sometimes what uh, Samsung will do, and it will immediately throw you, because it knows you've connected to an external display, it will assume that you want to operate in DEX, which makes sense. Here, this time, it did not do that, but of course, really easy to just switch over to DEX. So another great thing about this device, if you have the Guvis Media Player, uh, which again, I could understand if you want to forego this because really the best companion is having uh, just a modern Android smartphone is battery life because the battery life on this is fantastic. I mean, you're not going to just get through a day of use. I mean, you will, dare I say, never kill this battery while using the Guvis Lite. And that's because it can go for roughly 10 hours easily. So I don't see an instance where anybody's going to be complaining that the battery life wasn't up to snuff, which I think is another really important thing for anyone that is considering picking one of these up. Now, for those of you interested in the literal resolution uh, of the displays, you have two, again, 0.71 inch AMOLED displays. They are 1920 by 1080. That is a higher res than you're gonna find on any competing product. I've been saying this over and over again. Uh, 14 optical lenses in there. The PPI I already mentioned, nearly 4,500, which is nuts. And this all comes in at a hair over seven ounces. So, I mean, really lightweight, again, really comfortable. You already saw it on my mug. And I have to say, Guvis has done a really good job and I'm excited to see what they do down the road. And the fact that any uh, modern device can basically turn into the media player is great. And having this option is also great. I just want to see them refine this more, as I've stated over and over again, because it does have additional um, I.O. I mean, we have a micro SD card uh, reader on board, so you can drop more content into this device. 
uh, besides the internal storage. Granted, it doesn't have that much, it still has. Uh, and then another Type-C port uh, for uh, charging it up. And then, of course, the HDMI out and the USB Type-A, or excuse me, uh, go ahead and just disconnect this. There, you've got a Type A and you have HDMI. So I didn't explain this earlier and I will now. What Guvis incorporates with this is basically a splitter. So as you can see, we've got a main cable running off of the headset, which is you know built into it. You're not going to be able to remove that. You got to be careful with that. Uh, and that cable, we are now running into a splitter that is an HDMI. This is what makes this so flexible for just about anything you want to use it with that has HDMI out. So we're plugging it into that splitter, then taking the USB half of that splitter, throwing it into the media player so it powers the Guvis light. And then the other part, which is the video transmission, the H HDMI cable, I then, as I mentioned, I've thrown into this Cable Matters adapter, and that adapter has Type-C on the other end, which makes it compatible with just about every mobile computing device on the planet. So that rounds things out. Again, anyone looking for a portable, personal, high-fidelity display that is wearable, you're going to be happy with this. Um, it is not VR. I will reiterate that again. You're not going to have a 600-inch uh, display in front of you, but it will be the highest quality experience you're going to get out of a wearable headset here in 2022. You can read text, so if mobile computing is part of your picture in a private capacity, you can do it. Uh, but really, it's going to be best for watching movies, television shows on things like Netflix and other streaming platforms. YouTube, you get the idea. If you want to watch one of my videos, you'll do it nice and cleanly with this. And then, as I've stated over and over again, you know, just throw in your favorite uh, earbuds, headphones using this. Uh, of course, with the media player, you can get into other things like Bluetooth, but this is going to be the best route. But that pretty much rounds it out. Again, the Guvis Lite has great uh, fidelity, great battery life. It is expensive, but you know, show me something that competes directly with it, not VR headsets made by you know Facebook, and then get back to me. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them, hit that like button, and as usual, please feel free to subscribe, and please stay safe. Later.